It's become apparent that since its inception, the Pirate Emporium has received the vast majority of new cosmetics in the monthly update scheme. And I will concede, these monthly updates have been good for the most part, with Haunted Shores, Ships of Fortune, Ash and Winds, Seabound Soul, and Heart of Fire have been excellent additions to the game. Black Powder Stashes, Dark Relics, Smuggler's Fortune, Festival of Giving, Legends of the Sea, Cruise of Rage and Lost Treasures do let the side down a bit though. The content seems to go one of two ways, a great addition to the game or just a meh update all round. I understand you can't have a great update if they're monthly every month, however, one element of consistency amongst these updates is that the Pirate Emporium is always given a healthy number of items. Before anyone says it, yes I know Rare is an extension of a business and is here to make money, no one in their right mind should dispute that. But the biggest problem I have with the Emporium is that the other stores don't get nearly the same number of cosmetics, which really Really does rub me the wrong way when one of the biggest philosophies of Sea of Thieves is horizontal cosmetic based progression. So in this video I'm going to outline the issues of the system and suggest ways to improve it. I love this game and from this passion constructive criticism has to be voiced. I've been sat on my hands about it for a little while but I've seen it starting to become a bigger issue so now I think it's the right time to speak up about it. I'm not sure how many people know this, but microtransactions were due to be in Sea of Thieves in June of 2018, three months after launch. This was made public in the run up to launch and was very clearly outlined to be cosmetic only. This in itself sounds great, as we've been conditioned to accept microtransactions as long as they're cosmetic. When the game released and received a lot of bad press regarding the level of content, Rare did the best thing they could do and delay microtransactions indefinitely, with it pets and the captaincy update. This was an extremely smart move, as they definitely couldn't afford more bad press and outrage surrounding adding microtransactions to what most felt was a bare bones game. I sort of agreed with this sentiment, and Rare pulled off a legendary change of course with the first year of the game. They had to win their players trust back, and did that with hungering deep to anniversary. I absolutely love the style of updates in the first year, and looking at cursed sales, they added a load of cosmetics with that update. Anniversary hit all the right notes for me, and they originally had planned pets, and by extension the Pirate Emporium, but they pushed pets out as they weren't as impactful as previously thought. It wasn't until Smuggler's Fortune in September that they finally brought the premium store to the game, over a year after it was initially planned. I think overall the prices were decent with the exception of the ship sets, which are to this day way too expensive. It was announced shortly after Anniversary that the update had burned out a lot of the devs, and a new monthly update system was going to be the way ahead. This brought along a new way of delivering cosmetics, drip feeding and fragmentation. It was less noticeable with the first two updates, Black Powder Stashes and Dark Relics, as this is what they both contained and they really got into the full swing with Smuggler's Fortune. With Smuggler's Fortune, Duke opened up the black market, with old cosmetics as well as new recolors of existing sets. In this update, we got the Fearless Bone Crusher set and the Deep Ocean Crawler weapons. The issue with both of these is that they weren't full sets, and the Bone Crusher ship parts were only the flag, hull and sails. It really doesn't make sense to me that they took this approach. Fort of the Damned in October added a load of missing cosmetics from sets that hadn't been completed and loads of new stuff too. It's sad because if this level of content was added each or every other month, then it would be fantastic. Just look at this stuff available. But then, let's turn our attention to the black market more drip feeding and fragmentation. It's just so strange. If they had so many recolor sets, then why not release at least one at a time? That way people who want the full set can work their way through it over the course of the month. I think Seabound Soul in November marks the turning point in my opinion, where drip feed is put into maximum overdrive. I won't bore you with all the stuff they added, but it's the same thing for the black market more fragmentation. At least those in Arena got a new recolor to work towards. It got really interesting here as they ushered in the Flameheart story arc. This of course has to be the worst offender in my opinion, the Ashen Tomes. For those who are brand spanking new to the game, this meant each piece of the Ashen Dragon set, barring some clothes, were tied to these. The Ashen Tomes are rewarded for opening Ashen Chests and were completely random. It gets worse when you can receive the same tome over and over again. Not to mention these tomes came in 4 sets of 5 and spread out over the course of 4 months. 4 months to partially complete a set with 2 pieces being tied to Tall Tales. Legends of the Sea and Festival of Giving were pretty much the same, more fragmentation of recolors but at least Legends added some okay basic clothing options. 
This pattern is pretty much the same up to this day, with the only real exception being Ships of Fortune that added sets for each of the factions, some of which we've already known about for a long time, and Lost Treasures finally finished some launch sets, which had been in the game for over two years. It gets really bad when you consider the last two updates. Haunted Shores and Asher Winds added three different sails, no sets, just sails, and some slightly different tattoos. Meanwhile, the Pirate Emporium got a boatload of stuff, it is really a problem when you see prominent streamers or even avid regular players with millions upon millions of gold with nothing to spend it on. If you look at it, the people who want to spend their gold in the last year got 5 trading company sets, a load of fragmented recolors, one new Asher Dragon set, some tattoos and a few different sails. Whereas the Emporium got 9 ship sets with alternate versions of figurehead and sails, 22 emote sets, 3 weapon sets and a load of pets with outfits included. The catalyst for me was how they treated the Shroud of Ghost set, with only half of it being earnable. This is a big issue, as it twists people's arms into finishing the set and making a purchase that you wouldn't have previously have made. What's even more paper thin is a separate bundle for the remaining items to further entice you into buying something that you wouldn't have done in the first place. Just like the Ruby Splashtail costume, you can now get a Shroud of Ghost costume with an exclusive curse. Fans have been requesting more curses, and the fact that one is tied with a costume exclusive to the Emporium just flat out sucks. These cosmetics could easily be tied to the Hunter's Call or Shrouded Ghost itself. It's wrong, and I know people have been complaining about this for a while. I have seen people defending this sort of thing, which is strange to me, because those who are complaining about the Emporium are doing it for the benefit of everyone. By defending Rare, you're essentially making a rod for your own back. By all means, praise them for the great game that they've created and the world they've made, and the developers all seem like fantastic people, but I really don't want all the good progression tied to my bank account. I think a lot of people make the mistake of complaining about something without offering a solution themselves. And I think some of these suggestions could be really beneficial for the players while not affecting Rare's bottom line. Personally, I have absolutely no problem with the Pirate Emporium's prices. Barring the ship sets, they could use a reduction in prices. In terms of everything else, I think the prices are quite fair, and having certain items like pets cordoned off to the Emporium is also fine. My first proposition is to add at least one whole earnable set, not a recolor, but a new set. It's strange when in the last two updates, they added the Asher Wind sails or the Ghost Captain sails with no accompanying set. These would have been perfect to tie with commendations, with say the ship set pieces being tied with commendations and clothing slash equipment in the regular store. It may sound impossible or like a lot of work, but if Rare can produce loads of outfits, a full ship set and emotes in the Emporium every month, they can add an event based set. Secondly, I think Rare should seriously think about prioritizing the captaincy update and tie it with Pirate Legend. You may be a bit confused by this, but this can open avenues for gold sinks and new customization. I think it's fair, and don't hate me for this, to lock ship ownership behind Pirate Legend. Something that is still quite crap is how underwhelming Pirate Legend is. Just look at how few customization options Pirate Legends have, especially something that was touted as the game only just beginning before the game launched. The ship ownership would be a large gold sink, where you can buy a ship for a certain amount of gold. I think 1 million gold for a galleon, 750k for a brig, and 500k for a sloop. This would give you access to special captaincy cosmetics where certain ship sets have an upgraded version. This wouldn't be recolors but design changes from base versions. To further emphasize the uniqueness of ship ownership, you'd be able to name your ship and spawn in the Athena hideout while sailing out the waterfall to enter the world. These features were originally meant to be planned as part of the captaincy update anyway. Another level of customization would be added where you can customize your captain's quarter. Lastly, one final level of customization would be added, in which everyone could customize their lanterns, compass, handrails, mar shape, and harpoons. Imagine how much better ships would look if you could create something similar to the Ferry of the Damned. Lastly, when adding a recolor, make sure it's the whole set at once instead of fragmenting it. It allows you to keep better track of these and players don't have to wait months for full sets. Even in the latest Black Market update, we're still getting inky crack and stuff and that has been in the game since Shrouded Spoils I think. There we have it. I hope you enjoyed this and didn't get too offended by me criticizing Rare. Personally, I think the game is in a good place at the moment and I'm looking forward to how Rare evolve the game when it debuts on Xbox Series X and Series S, as there are a lot of hardware restrictions that will begin to be lifted. If you're new here and enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and drop a comment down below. Oh, and Rare, where's my new tall tale?